nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. So, good evening. Uh, welcome to recitation session number six on semiconductor device education. My name is Gerhard Klimek. Today was a beautiful morning at minus 18 Celsius here in West Lafayette. My car said that that was minus two Fahrenheit, whatever that means. Um, and my son decided to still bike to school, even though there was a two hour delay. So welcome to the Midwest and here we go with NanoHub. So um, what we'd like to do in NanoHub is uh, serve students, researchers and instructors. We do that uh, with our principal um, agenda is to model and simulate um, the nano electronics world and the nano world per se. We also want to enable people to learn and to teach with these type of um, modeling and simulation. We want to enable people to develop software for this and then ultimately also share and publish the results of their software, their lectures, tutorials, etc. So today we will look at uh, learning and teaching. And we have created a simulation powered curriculum where it's a one stop shop to uh, insert modeling and simulation into your classroom. And specifically, we focus on semiconductors today. And the general agenda here is to, to introduce uh, the standard elements of a semiconductor course um, uh, with uh, simulations that um, enable students to explore a variety of different things. You probably start from crystals and uh, band models, bulk semiconductors, and you go to PN junctions. Last week, we, co uh, we covered bipolar junction transistors. Today, we'll look at MOS capacitors, and then next week, we'll look at MOSFETs. So, um, as I um, click on this uh, here, I can have a couple of uh, items on the MOS uh, capacitor simulation capability in Abacus. There's a couple of exercises you can assign to your students. And if I click in here, I go from the wiki page that really summarizes um, the tool and its content to the actual tool. So the actual tool is a publication that actually shows up in the web of science. As something you can cite, like all of the 700 plus uh, tools on NanoHub. You can launch the tool with a click of a button. So Abacus is uh, a tool that's here in the gray area, but it's really an assembly of different tools that are NanoHub. So instead of trying to pull these tools together from various resources on various web pages, they have been combined in this. Um, this meta tool, if you will. So today I want to look at the MOS capacitor lab. You can click on the image here, or you can pull down the tools here from this list. Either way works. So let's click on MOS capacitors. Um, what you saw flash by here are some homework assignments or project assignments that my colleague Dragit Savasileska had really assembled. And uh, here is the tool running inside um, the uh, uh, Abacus tool. I thought uh, maybe it's worthwhile to pull up, uh, just for setting the stage, a, um, a PowerPoint slide that, I, that I'm using in my course. So here is a MOS capacitor on, uh, of a P-type semiconductor. Uh, where I pull the bias in the uh, direction where we have um, the accumulation of holes and you have electrons on the on the metal side. There's no band bending in the metal and you have an accumulation of majority carriers holes on the right side of the oxide. So you have a capacitor that sits here between the uh, holes on the semiconductor side and the balanced electrons on the other side. And you can now put the bias, obviously, in the other bias direction. And um, you won't have any band bending still here on the metal side, but you begin to bend the bands in the semiconductor. 
and you'll begin to deplete the holes out of this region. So now you really the charge in the semiconductor side is changing. Uh, you have still a capacitor, but the charge is now distributed over a, a wider length. So in a sense, you have two serial capacitors. And if you drag on uh, the bias even harder, you start to hit uh, not only the exposed acceptors here, but you also have an inversion where electrons start to um, invert here in this channel on the on the capac uh, on the um, conduction band. So this is taken from my course that is also on edX and it's available. So here on the accumulation side, you have majority carriers. In the depletion side, you still have fast acting majority carriers that are being depleted and they come from the body contact. But if you're in the inversion layer, you really uh, depend on a recombination uh, mechanisms to generate the carriers. So that's going to be a slower process. And we'll see that in two different um, uh, curves on the CV characteristics. So, so the fast carriers, the majority carriers can be rather rapid and the relaxation here has to be small. So that being said, we have these serial capacitors and in a sense, we have a variable capacitor and that's what we're going to model in this tool. So here we have a P-type semiconductor. You can go in the tool and choose an N-type or a P-type. Uh, we're looking right now just at a single gate uh, device, um, pretty big, uh, thick insulator. Um, there's a, a number of numerical nodes. What this tool actually runs under the hood is a full-fledged semiconductor device modeling tool based on Padre. So Padre is the uh, tool that Bell Labs used to use to uh, create their transistors. So this is a full-fledged tool, not a toy tool. And if I had simulate, uh, what it'll do is it should pull out a, a run that is cached, that is uh, already available because many people have run this. So we store the results in the middle. And you see uh, that here on the um, accumulation side, you have a capacitance. And as you're beginning to uh, deplete, you reduce the capacitance and you go down here to the high frequency response um, of the capacitor. You have two serial capacitors, so the capacitance overall gets smaller. And um, if you allow for um, slow uh, processes, meaning you have a low frequency uh, calculation, you can recover the inversion charge and get back the capacitance. And you can measure that also, not just in the absolute characteristic, but also in the in a relative characteristic. So up here is the, the nominal oxide capacitance. Um, here is the branch uh, that I just said, uh, that's the uh, high frequency response, and then you can recover if you go low frequency in here. So what might you do here in a, in a tool like this? You can certainly change the doping, and if you change the doping, then uh, you change the uh, depletion uh, uh, charges in the... Um, in the semiconductor. So let's see what happens. Uh, we can go in here, down in here and say, increase the, the doping by two orders of magnitude and hit simulate. What should happen is that the, um, that you, that we uh, changed the doping level here. It about got much higher. Um, by two orders of magnitude, that means that um, the depletion region has changed quite a bit. So, so what happens? So the depletion region has changed quite a bit. Uh, the charge is much closer to the oxide, so the capacitance is looking much closer to the, the standard oxide capacitance. So uh, we should increase the voltage maybe more to really bottom out here. but. So I really jumped quite a bit in the uh, to an extreme 
maybe I should have picked a, a more intermediate um, a doping level here um, compared to the two previous uh, the pre case here. So I'm going to fill in this calculation as well. And here we go. So we have now the original doping 10 to the 15, where there's quite a bit of uh, difference between these two uh, capacitance values. And as we bring the charge closer and closer to the oxide charge, we basically see a diminishing smaller and smaller change in the capacitance in the depletion region. So this is a an exercise you can uh, have your students play with. Uh, there's other uh, parameters that uh, influence this capacitance, of course, the oxide thickness. We can change that. We, thank you. Um, we can, uh, for example, reduce the oxide uh, thickness and see the capacitance change. So why don't we do that? So let's, um, let me clear this here. Go back to my 1E15. And pull out the stored result. And let me uh, divide the oxide uh, in two. Let's see what happens. All right, so let's put these uh, two curves on top of each other as we reduce the oxide. So I reduce the um, insulator thickness and um, I'm bringing, uh, so I'm not changing the, the overall oxide capacitance here that much, except I had shown you the, the relative size. So these, this was, I'm sorry, this was the relative capacitance. So this is the capacitance measured against the, uh, the ideal oxide capacitance. But if I look at the uh, true CV characteristic, you see that as I increase, uh, decrease the oxide thickness, I may bring the charges of course closer to each other. And uh, that means I increase the capacitance significantly. And that should ideally be by a factor of uh, uh, exactly two. So, so here's the ideal uh, thicker capacitance. I can look here. And as I make the oxide thinner, I uh, increase the absolute capacitance. And the curves qualitatively look the same. So here shown uh, the uh, the relative oxide capacity uh, measured against the the um, the ideal oxide, and you can compare the curves this way. All right. So, um, what else might you discuss? And certainly in my my course, what I do is um, I also look at effects of of charges in um, on free charges in on the oxide surfaces or even in the oxide so you can do that by uh, looking at a fixed charge in the gate insulator per cubic uh, centimeters or you can place uh, interface trap charges at the oxide interface so you can, um, for example, put one E11 oxide uh, charge density on the, on the insulator. Uh, let me run this simulation. And what happens is I shift the CV curve to a, a negative voltage. And if I put an a negative charge on the interface, I should shift the same set of curves to the right. And that is exactly what happens. So you can have your students uh, play with this kind of concept. Um, you can compare also the absolute characteristics. In this case, they should be roughly looking the same. There is no normalization, no funny business in terms of normalizing against the um, the absolute ideal oxide capacitance. What other things might you do? Um, let me clear this. And let me um, change um, 
is to um, look at a N type semiconductor now. So everything should roughly look the same, except you flip um, the CV characteristic around. It's a typical question you might ask in an exam uh, where students are asked to identify whether the semiconductor is n type or p type given this distribution you so we can do that in this tool as well and what's maybe interesting if you're looking at more advanced devices you can also look at a, a double gate device where uh, you have a thinner body of a semiconductor where you gate from the left and the right and look at the capacitance effects for that so for uh, further scale devices, uh, that might be quite interesting as well to be uh, examined. So we're at the 20 minute mark, um, roughly halfway through um, the, the demo that I'd like to give. I wonder if I can take some questions or pointers and maybe address some questions you might have in the, uh, in the chat or in the Q&A session. Now. All right, uh, the first question, can you put DIT into the model? DIT, like delta, like density interface traps. Um, I don't think you can do that explicitly. Let me look real quick. Um, there is a interface trap charge density, um, but that is, um, not a really active integrated model it's a it's a solid charge that you play so it would be a solid shift in in the curve let me see right. what, what the output log said because i know that padre in principle has these uh capabilities they may not be turned on and that is maybe something i can uh, work with a student to have it be turned on Yeah, I can't quite find it right now. All right, the next question, do you have sample projects that my students can work with? On this uh, particular MOS capacitor? So what we have uh, easily can are uh, additional documents. So here's a, um, an exercise where you look at analytical models, band diagrams, and electric field distributions. You can click on this, and this goes to a, a resource on NanoHub. And you can um, assign uh, such uh, exercises to your students and then to be explored as well uh, with a tool set. So yes, we have a certain set available. And um, I... I will want to add mine of what I do in my class as well. They're not in here yet. All right, if you're ready for the next question, how is sure. dispersion associated with interface charge? Don't see stretch out of curves shown. So that, if I remember this right, is really if you're you're having an interface trap effect. So uh let me let me go in here and oh, let me clear this out go to the standard device so i kind of reset myself uh, p type minus three and five let's it should pull this out Ooh, what's going on here? Let me reset this. So I just pulled out the tr just the tool by itself and launch a little bit faster.
you put in some charge density into the oxide uh, and see how that affects the the, the see it, it doesn't do much it's too small and you can bake so you see more of a solid shift here uh, you don't see the stretch out so and i believe the stretch out you would see if you really have an energy or fermi level dependent uh, dit at the interface so ooh, that's a pretty rigid big shift um Yeah, it's really a rigid shift of what you see here with a solid charge. Um, that's a very good question, though. Um, I believe that should be something we should be adding to this tool. So this is a very good pointer. I mean, could you make sure we take note of this? And I'll, I'll work with one of my students to, to hopefully add that. OK, sure. Thank you. OK, and the next question. Can we get the doping profile plot with this tool? I believe so. So there is a um, hole density, and there's a net charge density. You turn off some of this stuff. So this is, um, it's, it's, so here is the electron density. Here's the hole density, and here's the net charge density, and doping. So the Z gate zero, bandage diagram. So the doping is not being plotted here, but that can be easily plotted. I mean, it's really in, in part with a net charge density available. Here we go. So here you see the the depletion region, really. So, um, but that can be added as well. Like in the other tools, like the PN Junction Lab, etc., that are demoed, it's certainly there. It's zero, and here is uh, applied bias. So here we are at the inversion bias. All right, uh, the next question. Do you have the ability to model charge to flat band? To, the, to extract the charge that is needed to achieve flat band, I presume. Um, that is not built into the tool, but um, it, yeah, it, it doesn't drive it towards that particular bias point. Um, I presume I could sort of have students or myself figure that out where that flat band condition occurs, right? I can go in here and ballpark. I should um, flat band zero bias. I can certainly go in clear all of this and set this again to zero so i'm back to my standards at my environment so i would say maybe i look first at zero final voltage maybe i go from minus 0.1 to 0.1 and i would begin to home in like that um which is take out uh, three um and then home in from the various uh, plots i can generate i presume it's actually running it because this is certainly something i have not run like this under these conditions so i just uh, assembled the appropriate input deck and is plotting the results i hope here in a minute So now I can look at the 
band edge diagram certainly not flat band um it's more closer to uh getting closer to inversion so i would want to i would need to walk over to a um, more negative voltage let's call it minus one nine and see what we find there so this is how i would do it but there is no um uh preset way to to identify uh flat band and plot it and plot the charge distributions all right the next question can you simulate a leaky moss cap um i know that in um padre there is a tunneling model available i believe this is not turned on here and um so it, it definitely not in this tool let's put it this way right now but again that next to the uh, dit or the realistic dit i think that would be a uh, a good good thing to um to add and here i'm i'm reason getting reasonably close to flat band now by just playing um so this is at um that is at the last it's at the applied bias of minus 0.9 and i can look at the uh, bandage diagram all at gate equals zero and uh, last applied bias. so here we're getting close to to flat band and i can look at electron density so you see it's pretty flat here and very small hole density uh, it's dipping a little bit, but not much. So I can walk my way towards this uh, flat band and constant uh, charge density. But again, it's it's not a, a preset calculate that, please, kind of thing. All right, the next question, can we analyze the nanoscale device? Um, on this one, in this is a, a drift diffusion type simulation tool. So it is somewhat uh, void of true quantum mechanical gating effects, even if you said you do a, a truly a double gate device. So it will not properly model the uh, um, say if you had charge effects. Um, quantum mechanical effects due to quantization of charge etc so this is a purely classical tool that does not do quantum mechanics we have a variety of um, uh, tools available on nano that do quantum mechanical models um, there is a tool specifically called shred that does that so And that's done by my colleague, uh, Dragica Vasileska. And that tool specifically does handle uh, those kind of uh, effects. So let me just see what, but by default comes out. So it has quantization effects. Uh, here's your CV. And it looks at um, sheet charges, sub, in, sub band energies, et cetera. So, so that is is here. It's a tool called Shred. So, I that could be a, a suggestion as well, where we could include Shred for quantum mechanical effects in Abacus. So, that is not a problem. Um, I don't think Shred handles tunneling through the gate oxide though, but it it does all these wave functions if I remember right. So. Valley two, it has multiple valleys for the silicon in the different confinement directions. So it it has quite a degree of sophistication. If that's what you're teaching in class, that's certainly available. 
And here, as you increase the bias, it's, you see the squishing of the wave function and the charge against the oxide. So that, that is happening here in that tool. All right, our last question, and you might have touched on this, any way to model Fowler-Nordheim leakage or charge to break down? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm almost positive this is not what is being set up as a model inside um, the Padre right now, but I think that can be handled. So that is something I can have a student look at and expand and then add this option to, um, to liquid tunneling even through sort of um, ad hoc tunnel models and drift diffusion, as well as fallen Nordheim uh, over the barrier type stuff. Um, if there's no further questions, I am good to go. Um, I think I showed the major components of this tool that I wanted to show. So I heard a couple of implicit requests for improvements. So that can be done over time, obviously. Um, but that is certainly uh, a good pointer of what uh, people might want to see in in the output. So sounds sounds actually quite good. So I would say thank you very much for the feedback I'm I'm getting here in this session. All right, thank you everyone.